Hello, hello everyone, this is TikTok Gaming here today with another MTG Arena event breakdown. So this week I'm going to be covering the next festival in the Festival of the Fae event. So this is the second out of third event. Last week we did Artisan, um, and so I covered that in the deck that I thought was gonna that, that I thought we're gonna do well. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the Festival of Oko's Madness. Now, I think this event is very ironic based on the state of standard where everything is an elk, and that's kind of a joke, especially on things like Reddit, where, oh, guess what? The top, you know, commanders are all 3-3 elks. Um, but, you know, it's been a pretty big joke, and so for them to not only just make Oko's Madness a format, but also the way they present it. For instance, if you were to, you know, if it said Festival Momir's Madness, which is the name of the normal event, that would be, like, pretty normal, but they made it Oko's Madness, and instead of making it Festival Oko's Madness, it's Festival Momir Crossed Off, which I think is pretty obvious. But also, it's the art of Momir, and then someone taped on an elk face onto Momir, and I think this is really funny, and I think it's kind of cool, but I think it's kind of ironic based on the state of Standard right now, with, like, the top seven decks all running Oko. Um, but why don't we hop into the format and, like, what it actually is and not why it's, like, funny. Creatures you control have base power and toughness 3-3, and are elks in addition to their other types. So, basically, everything is an elk. Literally. Then, you can pay one, discard a card, to create a, co a token that's a copy of a random creature with CMC 8 or less. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. So, I actually did a video covering this format just in general, not this exact event. Um, and I actually, I think this might be better than Oko... <laughs> Then Momir's Madness. Now, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Momir's Madness because it's generally just a game of RNG because you don't actually enter with a deck. Your deck is just lands. That's the entire deck. And so what's going to be interesting here is that, first off, remember, this does not say you only activate this ability once per turn. So you can keep activating this as long as you have cards in your hand. So what I see happening is, so you, turn one, you'll play a land, you'll tap that land and discard another land to create a creature. Now, one thing that's also different is that you're not paying X. You're paying one, no matter what it is. So, if you have three lands on the field and three cards in hand, you can create three creatures. As well, it's not like they're going to be three one ones. They could be three, uh, not one ones, three one CMC cards. It could be three eight CMC cards. Now, the reason I don't say one ones is because everything's a three three. Kind of, and I'm going to explain some of those exceptions here in a second, but first, let's cover the rewards. So, Fairy Guide Mother, decent card. Hypnotic Sprite, nah. I mean, it sees play in, I feel like, I, I've seen it in used play. OK Ranger, haven't seen too much play with that. Bone Crusher Giant sees a lot of play, and Murderous Rider sees a ton of play as well. So, these cards are generally pretty good. They picked the better versions of the adventures, like the better ones that seem more standard play to, to be used for this event. This event, of course, has a 2,500 gold entry fee. You should cross this out. Never spend gems, especially because it's just five styles. Now, on the last event, I said, yes, I think pretty much anyone should do this because even if you don't like the styles, the format's going to be fun. With this one, I'm not sure because a lot of people don't like RNG-heavy formats, and this is literally just RNG. I mean, there are decisions you might need to make, but generally, it is just RNG. Um, so... Why don't we, like, break down what, why I think that this might be more RNG-dependent. Now, what's nice here is that you can't spend one mana to get, or you can't, like, get an 8-8 and then your opponent has a 1-1. All of your creatures can just cancel out each other's creatures. So they attack with a 3-3, you can block with a 3-3 that, you know, isn't as good. Like, it doesn't have as great of an ability. However, their abilities are still there, like I just said. So that means things with first strike. So... I just wrote dice. First strike, any of these will be super big in this event because, actually, uh, I think this is just standard cards, so let's, uh, any of these cards, because they will be 3-3s, three yes, but they will be 3-3s three with first strike, meaning that they will kill any other 3-3, three three. or yet alone, double strike will be even better, or anything that enters the battlefield with a plus one, count, plus one counter, or anything that boosts its power. Because while its base toughness are 3 3, if it has counters on it, that can add to it. So, something like Yorvo, um, who enters the battlefield with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters, this enters the battlefield as a 7 7, and that could happen turn 1. So, that's kind of where some of the issues are, are lie in this format. Um, like, unlike Oko's Madness, where at least turn one, you could only get a 1 CMC creature, while there are some 1 CMC creatures that are 
20 times bigger or better, it was still just a one CMC creature. Here you could you could get a, let's just say they are including uh, rotated out formats, because I don't think we've had Oko's Madness since rotation. So you could get a Land of Worlds, which would be useful. I'm not saying that. And then they could get that, that thing that makes it so it can't attack you. Um, now, I think that's okay. Now, last time they did put together, like, they added cards that aren't in standard or even historic at the time, and I thought that was really good. I, I think it was really fun, and it added a lot to it, but there were a couple overpowered ones, and now if, I believe they said somewhere that they would be in here, and there was one that was like, creatures can't attack you. Wow. Now creatures can't attack you, and so you can just hope to get something good and then just keep swinging. And of course, it had flying. Now, I think they they don't lose all abilities, so they're still going to have flying, or they're still going to have indestructible. Or So it's basically whoever gets the best keywords. The first one to get a flyer, first one to get a first striker, first one to get a double striker, first one to get an indestructible. Now, since there are a lot of those that might balance it out, just note that this is not going to be a who has the bigger creature. It's going to be who has the better abilities, which I think can actually be more interesting than an Oko's Madness format, where... In Oko's Madness, um, or in, oh my god, in Momir's Madness, it's just bigger creatures win. But here, the power and toughness don't matter. Now, I don't know if it's going to be more boring because you're going to burn out a lot faster. Like, if we were to do the math, right, you start with seven cards. Then, you play a land, so now you're down to six cards. And then you discard, a, you pay one mana and discard a card. So now you're down to five. Then next turn you draw a card, you're back up to six. Then you play a land and discard now two cards, you're down to three cards, the next turn, what should you do? So, so far you've played two lands. Now you pulled a land. So should you play the land? I think you play, yeah, it's because you have two lands. So then you play the land, and then you discard three of your cards, and now you have no cards in hand. So by turn three, assuming you're on, you're starting first, you are going to be out of cards in your hand. And it's going to be basically whoever can pull the draw cards, like whenever a non-human hits you, it's an opponent, sorry, um, you get, you draw a card, those type of cards are going to be super powerful, or, you know, so on and so forth, or something that lets you take cards back from the graveyard, otherwise you're just going to be getting a creature every turn, I, and I mean, that's kind of how Momir's was, but at least it ramped up, so you're getting excited, oh, it's a one, it's a three cost, well, next turn it's a four cost, and a five cost, then you might sip six, because, you know, be bells and lock, but then seven, and then eight, and then, that's another thing, is bells and lock in this thing, if it is historic, now you can't just avoid six, there's just a chance that you do this and lose the game, ah, this is, I think we're gonna have to really see the format, unlike Artisan, where you could kind of judge it and be like, people are gonna like this, I think this format's gonna need a lot more judging, and, there's not much else to say about it. I can't tell you what decks are going to be dominant because, well, all the decks are pre-constructed. It's a pre-constructed format. Overall, I will be participating in it. You can expect gameplay either Sunday or Monday because Monday is going to be a big day for news with the mystery packs where I'm going to do a whole video on that on Monday when they reveal what's in them. And so Monday's going to be a big day, so you might see that actually on Sunday, which is when this event starts. So, yeah, I, I think I'm going to, I'll check it out. Uh, another nice thing about it being Sunday is it gives you guys more of a chance to see if you like the format or not. Either way, that's been my take on Oko's Madness. I'm sorry if I've been saying Oko's Madness instead of Momir's or Momir's instead of Oko. I'm so- or, yeah. They are- it's just madness, honestly. This is just very interesting. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.